But which was cool. I love like long, crazy stuff, but typically there's more like movements and stuff. And I get where they're coming from with the laid back, you know, let's just hold oh, it. Oh, God, yeah, but, but I thought it could stuff. just a yeah. little bit, just a little bit, maybe. But you got, you got to remember, Otherwise, too, is, yeah. sorry, the original song, it was it was actually just about that long. Yeah, yeah so, that's so, true. I mean, so, I mean, yeah, it is, it is a long song. Some songs trying to kind of drag out a little bit and they kind of... No, yeah, no, you're right. It's weird but, now yeah. that we're like, oh, it's, it's too long. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's one, one of the longer songs. Like, uh, I was talking about this with some of the other day because we just got on uh, different albums. And, uh, oh, and now I remember why. Because uh, I made her work, <coughs> I made her like a Best of Door CD. So I have like 20 songs on there for her, right? And then we are talking about that and then we got on the topic of the Beatles. I said, well, you know, one of my my favorite songs just in general, like overall, is the web called Glass Onion. The reason with Glass Onion is because it explains a lot of the songs. Oh, yeah. There's about three or four songs it explains because it goes through uh, like a Fool in the Hill, you know, uh, uh, Strawberry Fields, The Walrus, you know. Oh, like, I was going to say The because, Walrus because, is not uh, in there. He's, because uh, it's, it's John Lennon because, you know, it's like, it's like cause I told you about The Walrus and me, man, goes, I tell you, man, where it's supposed to be, here's another clue for you all, The Walrus is Paul. So oh flat out tells nice. you, you know, so a bunch was, of sneaky bastards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was pretty cool. So I really that's what one of the like the songs it explains a lot. I mean, not that their songs are in depth, but you know they're they're a bit easier to kind of decipher. You know, but yeah. that just kind of get it kind of gives it gives it all clear because I mean there was hints all over Magical Mystery Tour, like right? no, like, yeah, you know the whole the whole thing with the I Barry Paul, you know, like, yeah. so <laughs> yeah, weird weird guys. But you know what worked. Anyway, for them. that was good. Anyway, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Good job, guys. <laughs> Keep her Sold up. stars. So next, we're gonna move on to a band called the Dirty Works, spelled with a U for both the dirty and the works. <laughs> You're all weird. And the song's called "Free Rollin'."
All right, that was Free Rollin' by the Dirty Works. I played one by them last weekend. Uh, it's actually my first one in this one, and I really, really dig this tune. Uh, I love uh, Periods of Flow, but it's kind of chill with that kind of that kind of kind of uh, subtle blues rock, uh, little, little riffs here and there, a little couple little kind of mini souls, and you know, yeah. but still kind of still kind of got that laid back, but you know, we're still kind of giving her. At first, we were sort of like, oh wow, reverb, and then like we kind of realized that it was supposed to be there obviously <laughs> like and it gave it this awesome like like we were talking about skeletal family we were talking about the cult we were talking about you too a little bit um love lo-fi bands i love the constant tambourine it's like a you know a chugging train you know say, the tambourine was a nice sketch yeah that's nice i like that tune a lot what do you think jess <laughs> i was i was thinking about like teenage head yeah i but... like that like soft punk kind of cruise but I, it's not something that I usually listen to into uh, this band just a little heavier and this is off uh, their older album this band's called uh, Revel 9 the song's called All I've Become <laughs> become uh they will be on the show on september 24th uh this song was really cool because like i mean i like my my hard rock and uh, i know i can still get into it and uh the first time uh there because they're a uh, big uh track out now it's called a good fight and he sounds like sound a little bit like alice in chains not not heavy heavy inputs but enough that no, you know like it yeah. stands out and makes it cool because um, it's 
I got Bush X out of that. A little bit. I was going to say Bush. Yeah. yeah. Well, they kind same of thing. The same thing. Yeah, same <laughs> Oh, Bush X? They had to yeah, change well, the like name because there's early Bush. Sorry. Sorry. In, in, no, 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 only in Canada, eh? Only, only, only in Canada because there's a Canadian band called Bush, apparently, so there's a huge dispute. And, yeah, I was like, what's his name? Gavin. Uh, Rosdale. 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 Yeah. yeah. That, I heard a little Dave Grohl in there, too. Or yeah. Little was, Fighters. Yeah, a little bit. It was a pretty grungy tune, very straightforward rock. I uh, I definitely Big prefer a bit more. Big shiny tune. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. And heaviness, <laughs> um, you know, but, uh, that. awesome. yeah, no, it was definitely a decent tune. Some uh, Some nice vocals in there. Well, next up, we're gonna do to we're gonna get to a band. The band's called No One's Son. This is a world exclusive because their EP comes out on Monday. Nice. And uh, this song is uh, gonna be the first song released off the EP, and it's going for like donations are going for cancer research that sort of thing. But these guys were a lot of fun, and uh, they actually uh, put me on the EP because they like, uh, sent me like an uh, advanced copy a few weeks ago. It was really cool, and pretty much the opening track. It's a clip uh, from the show. Oh, right on. So it just me talking about it was because the interview was a lot of fun. And the thing that just put us all the top is killing ourselves laughing is we were talking about like social media, that sort of thing. Like I say, well, you no, know, because social media, because Twitter and SoundCloud, and we have fans in like uh, here, and they got some fans of Bogota. And one of them says, well, what the hell is Bogota? And then, and then we're like, well, man, South America, man. It's just like, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. But it was just so funny because there's that little pause first, and then it came in. Well, what the hell is it? Oh. <laughs> so because of that, they named their actual EP. It's called Bogota. Nice. And, you know, they have me talking Spit. about that. So they got a little, they got a little <laughs> clip of the show, but, man, it was a good time. They were, like, really good guys, but that just made it just hilarious. Like, it just one of those things. Like, That's it was a perfect, perfect time. It wasn't done on purpose. There's that little pause, and then... Where the hell's Bogota? <laughs> 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 so, without further ado, this is the world exclusive premiere of No and Sun. This song's called Cold Art. It's out there, Brenny EP that comes out Monday called Bogota. And here we go, dig this. It's just a matter of time. A case of let's pretend everything is fine, but you know. There's no time for sorrow You cross that bridge tomorrow And leave the future far behind It hurts to know You won't see the road And the memories of you now Fade and go Show. 
That was no one song. The song is called "Colder." That is off their brand new EP, which is coming out Monday, called Bogota. Uh, I I'm I already like the band, but this was a cool tune. Now, no one's son in general is a bit more of kind of like of a mellow kind of rock pop flow, yeah. and uh, so is their first EP as well. But they they do it well enough where it doesn't sound like it's been done a million times. No, they put their twist on like most bands will put their own twist on their own music. Mm -hmm. Like gives it that bit of change that. You give it, you got a bit more appreciation for it. That was a nice song. I like the chord progression, the chorus, and um, yeah, no, it was a really nice, well written song, good vocals. I was thinking about like Oasis and the Verve, and yeah, and really like, kind yeah. of trippy. And Jason Collette, if you want to think Canadian stuff. You guys remember that band or that song? Uh, you want to take my picture? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That song, like. It got stuck in my head so many times, and I don't normally listen to music like that, but when that song was around on the radio, that was the one tune that kind of, it's that, it's that open kind of spacey, sort of relaxed rock. It was line. sad. It made me sad yeah. and tired. <laughs> I liked how that, liked that last tune had a nice progression, and then they, they picked up the tempo, or not the tempo, but sort of the pulse of the tune, right. the drums and stuff came in, and very cool. Well, next up, we're going to get to a band called Analog Wave, and this is their second album, Casimir, and the first album is self-titled. Uh, it technically was self-titled because they just, it's just a play on the letters with the other names, so it's kind of like A period, N period, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Anyways, the first one they did all themselves, completely on their own, you know, no help, no nothing, and it was like a killer album. And they got crowdfunded for this one, so they had like a Kickstarter project. Cool. Nice. And uh, they, they put their heart and soul because this album, like, even though I'm a fan, like, this album is just absolutely effing amazing i mean they did awesome. such a good job with it well, this song wrong, i have played before made. but this is off <laughs> this is off Ooh. their brand new album this one is called dead cat bounce Get some control, I need to get out of here 
That was Analog Wave with Dead Cat Bounce, and that's off their brand new album, Casimir. And uh, this one, like I, like I said, I played in the show before and I missed, but it still is a brand new song. And I, like, I absolutely love this album. For me, there's a huge wow factor from the first one to the second one. Mm-hmm. And uh, this one, it's got all, all the elements I like. I mean, the, the vocals are like really cool and like flow really well, and it's kind of got that, um, I don't know, almost, almost like a kind of like a honking sound, you know, kind of. Kind of, like, kind of give that extra little uh, little depth to it. Did you say haunting sound? Or, no, no, haunting, like honking. Oh, honking. Yeah, sound. yeah. I don't, I don't know how else to put it personally, but. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I definitely got oh, like haunting a synthesizer out of it. Or sort of. It's like the, the wham, wham. You oh, know, yeah. I don't know how else to put it, so. Yeah, okay. Just the sound itself. Yeah. yeah, I felt the song itself had like a really neat sort of haunting vibe. Um, you know, like not haunting in a scary sense, but haunting in like you know bewilderment sort well, of sense. You we're know? comparing it to Dead Can Dance. Yeah, and they we like, got to see in Toronto yeah. a couple of years ago. That was amazing. But um, like, you know, we're sure you listen to Dead Can Dance. And if you don't, you should. <laughs> yeah, you should check them out. Because you sound like them, and it's awesome. Good vocals. I like the production. It's really nice. Really good. Well, the next song we're gonna hear. Uh, I uh, checked out, well, they sent me their uh, video on YouTube the other day, 
And uh, I couldn't do it right away because, man, it reminded me so much of the Beasties. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. Cool. So the band is called MoFi and the song is called 9 to 5. <laughs> Take this. <laughs> That was MoFi, that was 9 to 5. Now, uh, this one, as I mentioned before we got on air and off air, that uh, I will very, very heavily Beastie Boy influenced. Yeah. Which probably. is yeah, a good yeah, and a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, well, if I could offer any advice to the band, like totally props on you. Beastie Boys are an amazing band, and you know, there's nothing wrong with uh, you know having an influence from them. But I would say try to develop it more into a unique style that is more like your own, even despite that you are kind of branching from them, which is fine. That's bands do that. You know what I mean? Bands come out that are monumental, and then a lot of little bands spawn off of that kind of sound that that they're kicking, and uh, it's totally cool. But I would try to make it a little bit more your own. Uh, that, that would be nice. Yeah. Sorry, the music's nice. Like, yeah, the, oh, like the players, whoever's doing the music is awesome. Well, right away, like, I was like, that's an awesome Yeah, like, guitarist. I wish there was, like, a contest and it was, like, write a song that sounds like the Beastie Boys because they would kick ass. Yeah. And it's yeah. a great song. They would win a million dollars. It's still their dollars. song, right? But, yeah. I mean, you could hear the they three got a, different voices. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You could hear, like, it was the same. Mm-hmm. But no, it was we, good. Yeah, we matched like, like, songs totally. to it. We were all like, "Oh, we love the Beastie Boys." Yeah, it's so, like, yeah, no, no, hard you know, no hard feelings. Yeah. But it's like, oh, it's like so same. But it's good though. No, fair enough. So uh, that's going to wrap it up for part one here. We're going to take a quick little break. We'll be back in a few minutes, and we're going to probably kick it off with a new song by Hilo. 
So until then, I will be back. Uh, Jess has got to go, but Anna Nick will be around for part two of New Music Saturday. So join us. We'll be back in about uh, 10 to 15. Hey. Bones out. <laughs>